And um, you ever heard of a rest uh, nightclub called the Octagon? Absolutely. It was hard to get in some of these clubs, like the Tunnel. So me and I still worked at Pizza Hut. I was friends with all these, these restaurants. I used to feed the homeless when I was in high school. So I went and borrowed some white clothes, kitchen clothes. And I got two hefty bags. And I bought ice and I put the ice in the hefty bags. I put my camera in the hefty bags and I put my clothes in the hefty bags. And then I would go to the nightclub, whatever nightclub was popping, and I'd go past the line, excuse me, I'm with the bar, I'm with the kitchen. And the bodyguards were like, let him in, let him in, he's at the bar. I'm like, Phew. I go right in, go into the bathroom, dump the ice, take off the kitchen clothes, throw them in the garbage, take out the camera, pop open the flash, and it was on and popping. Johnny, can I stop you there? Because this is, oh, okay. no, no, that's nothing. I mean, I had to be a ninja. You had to, you have to, you have you, to figure it out. You just gave such an incredible gem right there because mm -hmm. anybody who has ever climbed to the top of their craft, mm -hmm. you do what it takes. There is no such thing as no for an answer. There's no plan you B. You figure it out. And I love that story mm. because it showed that, you know, you're not the Johnny Nunez yet, mm -hmm. but you know I got to get that shot. And how can I get into places mm -hmm. that at this point your name doesn't get you in? Mm -hmm. I love that story. So check this out. On 23rd Street and, and uh, Park Avenue, if anybody ever goes there or is in that area, a client, mind you, I have my own company, so I only eat when there's food. And a client promised me that they would pay me by a certain day. That day came and I, they said, I won't have no money for you. I had like $20 on me. And I was just boiling because I'm like, I'm going to have to make this $20 last, you know? And this overweight homeless man comes over to me and he's like, excuse me, I want some money. You have money? And I was about to just scream on this dude like, you about to be my punching bag, bro. And I'm like, but you know what? God is in me. So I said, excuse me, before I let him have it. If I give you this money, what will you do with this money? He goes, well, honestly, it's not the money. I just want some food. I said, okay, let's walk this way towards Madison Avenue. There was a Subways. And as I was walking angry to get this guy a sandwich, it's almost like when you're auctioning bidding and someone's bidding and then you bid higher and then all of a sudden no one bids higher than you and you're stuck with the bid. That's how I felt. And when I went into the subway, um, I saw people covering their nose and like moving away from the guy. And I was like, you know, that's not nice. You know what I'm saying? So I said, hey, Oscar, Oscar, what, what do you want on that sandwich? As I was online, I said, go, go grab a bag of potato chips and tell the boss that I'll, I'll be a little late. I paid for the food. And I said, oh, Oscar, I'll, I'll catch you later. Cause I wanted them to leave with dignity. Mm -hmm. But now, after the sandwich was purchased, I had like maybe $11, maybe, I don't know, $8. And I can remember my, myself telling myself, great, Johnny, we were broke. Now we're even more fucking broke. You <laughs> did great. And I was like, you know, I know God will provide. So as I was walking towards the door, angry as hell, my phone rang. And I heard, hello, Mr. Nunes, is this Johnny? I'm like, yes, this is Johnny. I'm like, Johnny, we would like to know how much is your rate per day. I'm like, well, you know, I don't know. Um, you know, being that you might be a new client of mine, um, you tell me. Well, well, you know, it's three days, maybe four days. Um, can you work all four days? I'm like, yes. Um, you know, who, you know uh, what's the rate? I said, well, you're my new client. Why don't you tell me? How's $8,000 sound? I said, $8,000 per day, Mr. Nunes, per day. I was like, um, hold on one second. I'm like, that's eight times four. That's eight times. I'm like, take the 24. I'm like, um, yes, I'm available. And who is the client? Uh, Michael Jordan for Nike. No way. I wound up being Michael Jordan's personal photographer for three years, maybe four years. No way. For the brand Michael Jordan Classics. Do you know how they found you? A girl named Teresa saw me always out and about, you know? So the moral of that point is that even in the darkest hour with no money, even though inside my head, myself was cursing myself, I go back to my mother who adopted me. And she always would tell me, you know, God will never forsake you. If you keep your faith in God, watch how he's gonna bless you. 
There's another point I'd love to bring to the Sorry. table because my grandfather used to always tell us, people are always watching. You don't know who's watching you. And you always work and you always do the best job you can because you don't know who's watching mm -hmm. you. Now, the woman who referred you to at that time, I got to believe mm -hmm. Michael Jordan is, mm -hmm. you know, on top of the yeah. world. Had you not been out there doing your thing and working, mm -hmm. you know, at, at the capacity that you were mm -hmm. and, and presenting yourself with, mm -hmm. with class and dignity, that would never have happened. Mm -hmm. So I think it's so important for people to understand I don't care if you are sitting by yourself, if you think that nobody's watching you, never take the easy way out. You work and you give it 100% all of the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great story. Thank you. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.